we glorify your name. Oh Lord, we glorify your name. Oh Lord, Yeshua, we glorify your name. Oh Lord, I glorify your name. Jesus. Master, King of Heaven, you are holy, worthy is your name, you rule. worship you, I worship you, I exalt you, you are holy, you reign, yes you reign, I glorify your name. Glorify your name, my heart. I see your sanctuary rising in my life. I see your sanctuary rising, Lord. My soul longs, longs for you. I long for you, Lord, I thirst for you, I seek you early in the morning, Lord, in the morning light, I call upon your name, King Jesus, Master, Savior, I worship you. My soul longs for you, Lord. My heart cries out from the womb of the morning, Lord. I seek your name. You are my strong tower, Elion. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the song of heaven. You are holy. I glorify your name. Oh Lord, Yeshua, I glorify your name. Oh Lord, I glorify, I glorify your name. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I magnify your name this morning. I join, oh God, the angels I join this morning, the saints I join your bride across the earth. I join sons and daughters, oh God, that you have awoken into, yes, a new day. To call, to call upon the name that is above every other name, Yeshua, Yahweh, Elion, Emmanuel, God with us, in us, by us, through us, no one like you, none to be compared to you this morning. 
I rejoice in you. I celebrate you. I honor you. I extol you. I magnify you. Your word says, let everything that has breath, yes, praise you. You've called us to worship you. Oftentimes, Lord, we are about, yes, interacting with you without really realizing that we are called first to worship you. And so this morning, Father, let this moment, let this time be, yes, a clear and call. Let this moment be a time, yes, to call a people, to galvanize a people who can worship you, who know what it means to worship you, because that is the very essence of our existence, that we worship you, that we honor you, that we glorify you, that we lift your name on high, that we enthrone you. Yes, Father. Lord, this morning, my melody may not sound right. My, my instrument may not sound right, but my heart this morning, yes, is connected towards your throne. And that's why I say, O oh Lord, that's why I say, O oh Lord, you are my son. You are, you are, you are my son. You are my light, in you I find hope to live, oh Lord. You are my joy, you are my everything, my peace. You are, I glorify your name. Let everything that has breath glorify, magnify, praise you, Lord. You deserve all the glory, my King. I worship you, Lord, and magnify you. I enthrone you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. I worship in your very throne. Glory, honor, Jesus. But take this time, Lord, just to glorify you just to exalt you just to extol you just to magnify your throne your name your face is what oh god this morning i long to see lord i thank you for men and women being steered wherever they are this morning whatever they're doing let there be a steering towards your throne. Let there be a steering towards the place of your house. Let there be a place in the heart of men this morning to come and bow and worship and exalt and lift up your name. Because there is no other name greater. <laughs> Everything created has got a name attached to them. The president, the prime minister kings and queens CEO and CFOs doctors lawyers commander yes chiefs emir emperor whatever name they may be called professor engineer pastors apostles bishop whatever name men may attach to people and places they bow to your name this morning you are awesome awesome in beauty awesome in beauty you are awesome to behold your name oh god is like honey in our lips on our lips i bless you this morning i worship you let my worship oh god this morning be indeed a rising offering, a sweet-smelling savour before your very nostril, O oh God, my Father. Let there be, O oh God, yes, a purification of the heavens. Let there be, O oh God, O oh Father, a release, a sanctification, a purification, O oh God, yes, of the firmaments through our worship. Let a church rise this morning, yes, to honor him, to glorify him. Exalt the Lord our God, for he is holy. He is worthy to be praised. There is none like him. There is none like him. 
You can't do better than worship him. You can't live better than worship him. You can't give better than worship him. Whatever you do, let it be a worship unto him this morning. Because indeed, that is his desire. That, that is his desire. That is his desire this morning. Don't forget, you are given breath to worship him, to honor him. So bring your life this morning before his offer, before his first to offer yourself as an offering unto him. Lay down your life unto him this morning. Give him all. Give him all your expectation, your aspiration. Lay your fear down before him. Lay your worry down before him. Lay your expectation before him. Lay your achievement before him this morning. Lay your success and your failures. Lay everything down before him. Let him take preeminence. Let him take preeminence this morning. Let him take the first seat of your day. Let him take the first seat of your thoughts. Let him take the first seat of your heart. Let him take the first seat of your desire. Let him take the first seat of your expectation. Let him take the first seat before that meeting. Let him take the first seat before that commitment. Let him take the first. Let him take the first because he will always be the first. Having said all and done all, he will still be the first and the last. Is the Alpha and the Omega. When everything has been said and done, He will remain the Alpha and the Omega. When you've built everything you can build and there's nothing else to build, He will remain the Alpha and the Omega. When you think you have failed and you think there's no more hope for you, He will still remain the Alpha and the Omega. In all things, He reigns. He will always reign, no matter the condition, no matter who is on the throne, no matter who is the throne, no matter who is enthroned. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Come on this morning. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. You see, that's what worship does. It gives us perspective. It puts us where we're supposed to be. That's what worship does. Worship puts you where you're supposed to be. Worship puts you where you're supposed to be. It gives you clarity of what life is all about. It gives you insight. It gives you foresight. It gives you direction. It puts you, yes, in the pedestal where you're supposed to be. When you don't worship God, it's so, it's so easy that we assume what we're not. When we don't worship, when, we, when we've when lost sight of pure worship. You see, worship is not just what you sing. What you sing ought to awaken a revelation in your heart. Our song ought to awaken, yes, ought to spur, ought to steer something in us that makes us go, Oh God, I bow before you. When we truly worship him, we can't stand. Who can stand before the Lord? Worship cr creates a better perspective of who he is. Wor worship is like a painting. The more you worship and you, you, you begin to have a picture of this, of this painting on the canvas, you begin to have a better insight. You begin to, you, the picture begins to get clearer. And from nothing you go, ooh, wow, whoa, wow. That's worship. It gives us insight. It gives us foresight. It gives us insight. It calls us to the place of the bowing. That's why when we invest in worship, self disappears. In the place of worship, pride disappears. My own thing disappears. Because worship is a place where the fire of God begins to consume you. And as you worship, as you worship, that fire begins to consume every iota. Of your own idea, of your own desire, of your own aspiration, of your own agenda. That's why one of the greatest danger we have in our day is the fact that people claim to be worshipping. But what we see is them. We don't see Christ magnify. We don't see Christ amplify. Worship today has become entertainment. God help us. God have mercy on our generation. We see what our heart is not in agreement with. I prayed this morning that you and I will rise up. 
that will be truly awakened to the occasion that we will know we will come to a realization once again that there's a generation being called to come to the place of worship <laughs> That in this third day, that in this last day, in this day that we have been awakening to, that there is a call to come to the place, to journey to the place of worship. In worship, there is always a journey. You can't worship in comfort. You have to take a journey. You have to take a move. You have to move from where you are to the place of worship. They say we go yonder to worship him. True worship is not comfortable, it's not convenience because it's an offering you're going to offer. You're going to offer an offering unto God and that offering is not just something you bring, it's your life that you bring to him. Oh, Father, we worship you. <clears throat> I worship you. I worship you. I glorify your name. I magnify your name. I enthrone you, Lord, my God, my King, you are worthy, Lord. I sing to you a new song. Oh, my song will rise to you in the morning light. I will worship you, Yahweh. Holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord. Worthy and righteous is my King, I worship you. You are holy. Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy. 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 The Lord, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy You are holy, Father. You are worthy. You are enthroned. You are magnified. You are exalted. We saturate the atmosphere this morning. We invite your presence into our lives, into our place of our bond. It's called worship. Worship is what invites him into our realm. You see, for him to return back to earth, there has to be a generation who have, hallelujah, risen above the, the, the gravitations of their day in worship unto God. It is worship that is going to bring him down. It's not going to be our defeat. It's going to be a triumphant church. A triumphant church is a church, hallelujah, that have learned to key themselves in the place of worship. Hallelujah. We rise this morning. Let your, let your prayer this morning be a worship. Do you know that prayer is worship to God? Do you know that prayer, one, one of the essence of prayer is to worship God. Prayer is worship. Worship is what paves the way. Worship is what paves the path. When we begin to lose perspective, it's because we are losing Amen. Yes, the essence, the importance of worship. I told you, worship will always bring us to perspective, to the right perspective. When you see people lofty, when you see the, like the kind of things we were talking about yesterday, it's because of people have left their estate of worship. Come on. Galabushta Bradeveyando. 
Lord, make us part of a generation who have set their heart on the journey to come to the place of worship. Give us, O God, a heart of a traveler, a heart of a sojourner. Make us pilgrims, O God. In this new day, O God, <clears throat> may we journey, O God, as Abraham journeyed with Isaac to the place of offering, to the place of sacrifice. We offer our lives to you this morning. I offer my life to you this morning as a living sacrifice, not dead sacrifice. Everything in me, a life to worship you. My brothers, my sisters, wherever they are on their way to their various workplace, as they get ready and prepare for the day, let this day, oh God, yes, be sundered in the spirit of worship. Let this day be sundered in the spirit. Let them hear the clarion call. Let them hear the sound of the trumpet calling them to the place of your altar. Labdava no Spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> grant us an access this morning an opening into the demand of the day we bring our hearts we bow them before you we bring our lives and we bow them before you Lord I offer my life to you this morning once again as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable for this is my reasonable service my call my duty i take my place my post this morning at the altar how can we be positioned at the gate post how can we mount the wall when we have not yes resume our duty by the altar father help us this morning let us prioritize this call. Help us, O oh God, to be people who have come to repair the altar. Friends, we can only repair the altar by, yes, offering unto God a sacrifice from our hearts. The stones to rebuild the altar of God, amen, is the stone of living worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Almighty God. We offer our lives to you. We surrender ourselves to you. We let go of our guardedness. We let go, oh God, of our fleshy pride, proudful life, oh God. We let go this morning. We let go of religion and the traditions of men. We let go of the thing, the thin men called Christianity that is that is stinky, that is far from the order of the priesthood. We let go of the fake. We let go, oh God, of the opinions and the definitions of men. We've come to seek you. You, Christ, our King. You are the pattern. You are the way to the Father. <laughs> and many things we're doing today, we are practicing and preaching that is far from your heart. Have mercy on us. We turn to you this morning. Yes. We move away from the thing that men call, from the ideologies, the, the philosophy that men have crafted, the image men have crafted, and they call it Christianity, but does not reflect you, does not express you. Because truly, if we are what we claim we are, our life ought to, yes, be reflecting a glory of what, yes, manifested in them who followed you. In that day, they were called Christians, Christ followers in Antioch. Because they saw a reflection of Christ in them. We return, O oh God. We return to you, our stronghold. We return to you this morning, our bulwark. We return to you this morning, our hiding place. Help us not to be in a hurry. When we worship you, time yes is gained time stands still in the place of worship because we don't have enough of time worship is eternal 
So help us to know that even the very breath of our life was designed to worship you. Our heart this morning journey towards you. We come to the heel of the Lord. Who can come to the heel of the Lord? That's why this day we come through. Yes, the blood, the blood. It's your blood, oh God, that paves the way for us. Without your blood, we have no access. We understand, oh God, that the blood is what paves the way for us into the Father's heart. So we come this morning because you have cleansed us. Because you are our justifier. You've sanctified us this morning. Your word says, sanctify them by your word for your word is truth. Hallelujah. We sanctify this morning. We worship. And as we sanctify, we allow, oh God, this offering of a life rising as a sweet smelling savour to sanctify the realm, to sanctify the land, to sanctify our community. Don't you understand that as your worship rises unto God, it also purifies the realm? That's why the enemy wants to destroy the place of fatherhood in homes. Because when fathers begin to raise their hands and their voice unto God in their various homes, ah, the devil is in, is in trouble. The place is, is sanctified. Every other foul spirit, hallelujah, bow the need. Worship is warfare. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? That's why the enemy would do everything and anything, anything within his power, within his arsenal to hinder your worship. Remember that worship is not just what you do. Worship is who you are in an expression of a life. So what you sing, your gesture in the place of worship ought to be the configuration, the posture, the condition of your heart. We worship you. We honor you. We exalt you. We extol you this morning. The nations worship you because we represent the nation in the kingdom. There's something called the power of representation. Have you noticed how Noah was the saving grace of his household. When Noah, a representation, yes, of the spirit of fatherhood, aligned himself. The Bible says Noah and his household got saved. The jailer, it was him and his household that got saved. May we come to the point and place that what we do, how we align our life in this last day, it is one of the principles of the evangelism of the last day. We have to tap into the prophetic expressions of God in saving the nation. That if we can get the head of the house, if we can get men to become worshippers and women supporting them, hallelujah, we can change our nation. Can a nation be, be changed, be born in a day? Yes. But we need to understand the strategy. It comes through power the power of worship women stand by your husband encourage them to be a worshiper don't give up on them pray for them until they take their rightful role the enemy will fight will make sure that he disfigure he he cause a disarray yes in homes in community for one thing for once for one thing's sake worship because the enemy knew, remember, he was the cherubim that covered. He knew, he had the understanding, he had the key, he had the strategy of the power of worship. Worship is not just singing unto God. There's more to the spirit of that expression that we need to understand in this new day. Never marry a person, a man who cannot worship God, who cannot bow his life before God. And if you have married one, it's your duty to pray that person back to his priesthood. In worship, there are orders. <laughs> There's the order of Zadok. That's why I named my last born Zadok. 
It was a prophetic signal to this generation. God is restoring. The last order of priesthood that will be restored is the order of Zadok. Is that order that will bring us, amen, to the Davidic concept of lifestyle. In that Davidic concept, we will enter into the realm of the Melchizedek. A lot of people talk about Melchizedek order, but we don't understand the flow. <laughs> the flow. <laughs> Open our eyes, Father. Open our minds. May we not raise another generation that will not understand how to sing the songs of the Lord. May we not, un may we not raise a generation, oh God, that have been caught. They've been caught away from the flow of how worship ought to be offered to God. May we not just become seekers of success. And yet we have forgotten the way to Zion you've called us I'm sounding a clarion call this morning I'm blowing the shofar this morning in this place I pray Father that we will not just be a verbal mouth Christians but our heart oh God will connect truly with the utterance of our mouth that everything in our lives within our lives will bring honor and worship unto you, Lamb of God. You're calling the people to return back to the pattern, to the order. And this is what I am declaring this morning. That prayer is not just about your need being met. That prayer must enter into the point and place where you are able to meet the need of the Father in the place of worship. Let's not become spiritually selfish. True biblical spirituality is that we become selfless. That we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Father, that is our heart cry this morning. That is our desire this morning. We turn to you. We look up to you this morning. We shy away. We move away from the distractions of the day. From the distractions, yes, oh God, of, of the season. There's a spirit out there seeking to draw us away. Fill us with activity that steals our time. Building pyramids. While we are hindered. While we are stopped from going yonder to worship God. It was the essence of worship God brought the people of, 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 of Israel out of the land of bondage. What did they tell you know, Pharaoh? It says, God says... Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go yonder to the mountain to worship me. You're so occupied, busy with all kinds of things. You don't know that those, those are part of the strategy of the enemy. They sound very laudable. They sound very noble, those things. But they are stealing your heart and your time away from the place of worship. Are you a worshipper? Are you a worshipper of God or your worshipper of things? Your worshipper of God or your worshipper of of you know of whatever it is out there that you're worshiping. Whatever takes your focus demands your worship. Yes. Wherever you find yourself, whatever you are doing, even if you are the president of a nation, your first calling is to worship Yahweh. You are the chief security officer of a realm. Your first call is to worship. You're a doctor seeking to go save somebody's life this morning. Your first call is to worship. You're going to defend somebody this morning. Yes, in the law court. Your first call is to worship God. You're going to war. Your first call is to worship Yahweh. You're sending your children to school. You must teach them that their first education is to worship God. We've got to get the, we've got to get the pattern right, friends. We've got to get the order right. 
Let's get the order right this morning. That's what I've come to do this morning. To awaken your heart, to steer your heart. To steal your heart away from the charms of this world and reconnect it back to God. He needs you. He's longing and waiting for your worship. All those strongholds that have held you back, that are keeping you back. When you start to worship God, they start falling like a placard. I'm telling you. Just drag yourself to the place of his presence. And just begin to worship. And just begin to worship and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Just seek his face and worship him, worship him. And your life will become an offering to him. Worship the Lord. And worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Let your life a living breath be an offering unto him. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Holy. Holy is the Lord. I say holy, holy is the Lord, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord. Yes, it's not difficult to worship Him. Just let the song rise from your heart, offer to Him a living sacrifice. Holy he is the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Let our worship sanctify and saturate the realm. As we worship you, Father, may we recognize that you are enthroned, that you are enthroned. Because that's what you said. You will be enthroned in the worship, in the praise, in the glory. As your people glorify you. As a people, yes, creates an atmosphere for you. Your word says you will be enthroned in their worship. We thank you, Lord, this day. Thank you, Father, for strength that we received this morning in the place of worship. Yes. Thank you, Father, for strength this morning that we receive in the place of worship. Thank you, Father, for strength that we receive. Thank you, Father, for courage. Thank you, Father, for new life that we receive in the place of worshiping you. Thank you, Father, for newness, new vision, new understanding, new revelation. Thank you, Father, this morning for a refreshing of your spirit, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, revelation, understanding. Wisdom this morning is building this house. Hallelujah. I bless you, Father. I honor you. We saturate, oh God, the realms of the cyber realm. We saturate the cyber realm this morning. All the realms of the social media. We proclaim and we declare this morning. May our people rise up to worship you in spirit and in truth. May there be, oh God, this morning, yes. An awakening of a generation who dare to worship you unashamed unafraid thank you father we honor you i honor you oh god i lift up your name 
I proclaim you are worthy of glory and praise, honor, majesty, power, dominion be ascribed unto you this morning. Thank you, Father, that in our worship we go forth this morning. In our worship we advance. In our worship this morning we pressing into you. Thank you, Lord, that this worship is bringing us into dimensions in you. We're climbing higher. We're coming closer. We're having a better glimpse, a better reality and revelation of who you are this morning. Worship is changing us. We are becoming more like you, more like you, more like Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that this morning I'm becoming more like you. I'm becoming more like you as I worship you, as I glorify you. My life, oh God, is changing, oh God. Thank you, Spirit of God, that I'm having a better understanding of who you are, what you are, what you require of me, what you demand of me this morning. I offer everything that my life, oh God, is designed for today i lay them on the altar and i ask you come jesus take your place may your kingdom come may your rulership come may your dominion your spirit come this morning may your yes essence power may your wisdom guide may your knowledge be what oh god motivate my actions this morning i thank you god touch my lips let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart oh god be acceptable in your sight i thank you this morning that this realm is sanctified saturated come yahweh take your place king of glory citadel in this place have your way rule over this realm oh god thank you thank you thank you thank you that we're breaking barrier as we worship you we're breaking limitation yes limitations of the mind limitations oh god yes within our psyche limitation within our faculties are, are falling right now thank you lord that you're healing us oh god you're freeing us delivering us oh god from every shackle from every hold yes every toxic thinking every ungodly pattern and ways right now are falling because we've come to the place of worship we worship you lamb of god we worship you, King of Glory. We worship you, Elion. We glorify you this morning. Have your way. Take your place. Be glorified. Be exalted, Lamb of God. I thank you for what your spirit is steering right now. Thank you, Father, for, yes, a new day. Thank you, Father, for the song of a new day. Thank you, Father, for that which your spirit is doing. Hallelujah. 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 I bless your name. Thank you, Father, for the power of your spirit that is leading us into new realms, new reality this morning to the glory of your name hallelujah father i bless your name thank you father thank you father glory 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 glorious days upon us uh, glorious realities thank you spirit of the living god thank you father for new day new life new ways new expression thank you spirit of god not by might not by power hallelujah but by my spirit i thank you i give you praise i give you glory i worship you i exalt your name Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to Yahweh. Glory to the King of glory. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I thank you. I honor you. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. As a nation, we praise you. As a community, we praise you. As families, we praise you. As men, we praise you. As women, we honor you. Oh, Lord, we declare this morning, we come corporately as your church, as the body of Christ. I declare this morning, hallelujah, that we're going forth. We're breaking forth uh, into new days, new realms, new reality, a new sense of understanding. Thank you, Father, that nothing can hinder, can stop what you have begun. You who have begun a good work, you are able to perfect it uh, to finish it even unto the days of our lord i thank you once again this morning i thank you for men and women out there who have come to the place yes of of worship of honoring you of glorifying and praising your name thank you father for the things that your life this morning will manifest will express will reveal indeed father thank you spirit of god that their life becomes a wonder a wonder to their generation nothing will hinder nothing will stop them nothing will 
will frustrate them. They will fulfill, oh God, the, the purposes, yes, that you have ordained for their life. I thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be unto you, Lamb of God. Glory be unto you, King of glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. You are holy. You are worthy. You are exalted. You are magnified. Hallelujah to you, Lamb of God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Friends, I want to just encourage you this morning to continue to bless the Lord. Let your life be the very expression of worship. Let the purpose, the the reason of worship, let it saturate your life again. Don't allow anything to stop or hinder you. Say to the Lord this morning, Lord, my life I offer to you as a living sacrifice. Let all that my life is and represent be an offering unto you. Touch me. Help me not to forget. Help me, oh God, yes, to become students of your presence. Help me to become, yes, a vessel that knows the importance of of living within the ambience of your presence in worship because it's from there that you're able to see things correctly. It's from there you're able to see see things rightly. Yes, like I said earlier, worship gives us perspective. The things we're pursuing, we're running after, we're clamoring for, but by the time we begin to worship the Lord, suddenly you see how those things can just fade away. And heaven brings you into right alignment. When you don't worship, self will become magnified, will become amplified. Self will will continue to, yes, exalt itself. Because that's what self does. Self exalts itself. But when you start to worship God in spirit and in truth, of course, Christ is magnified. You think less of yourself. You, you think more of him. And the more you do that, guess what? The more he blesses you. Even though this is not just about blessing, but if you're a true worshiper, God blesses you. You don't worship him because you want a blessing, but if you truly, truly do worship him, he fights on your behalf. Because you have prioritized, yes, his presence, his place in your life. He goes on your behalf. We thank you, Father, this day. Thank you, Lord, that we become a company of them whose life are totally, totally offered on the altar. We totally surrender our life as Isaac on that altar. We totally yield ourselves. I totally yield myself. I surrender my life, my children. Everything that I represent, the ministry you've committed into my hands, I lay them on the altar. And I ask you this morning, let your fire fall on everyone, everything. Purify us again. Purify us. Purify our lives. Make us holy, worthy. Make us a people who lives for the glory of your name. May our life be an example. May our life be, yes, a conduit that changes and transforms our society because we are worshippers. Oh, Father, give us a heart of true worship this morning. Give my children, my loved ones, my community, my disciples, give them a heart of worship this morning. Yes, that is what your word says. That's what we need in this season, particularly where men are becoming a reflection of idols. We see more of idolatry spirit. Idol is taking over our land, taking over our nation, taking over the life of our children. We're becoming idols to all kinds of things, to gadgets. We're becoming idols to all kinds of... Oh God, help us. May we understand that we are created for one thing, to worship you. So turn our hearts to you. Turn our lives to you. Someone says, 
how you spend your time and what takes more of your time defines what you worship. That's a hard one, but that's the truth. Help us this morning. We rededicate our lives to you. We rededicate ourselves to you. Everything that we represent, where we are, what we do, where we live, where we go, friends, commitments, business, we lay them all down. Because when we breathe that last breath, we don't want to be able, we don't want to be able to say that ah I wish I'd I wish I'd worship God the more I wish I'd done more. Help us to do everything that we can. Bring us to the place once again, yes, of realization. Help us to remember that whatever you called us into whatever you've given, committed into our hands, whatever the next initiative that we need to do, we need to carry out. Let us sit in the light of worship. Let us see those things in the light of worship. That our life means nothing. That our life means nothing except is a reflection of true worship. That's my prayer this morning. Let everything that I do, whatever I say, wherever I go, wherever you locate me, whatever you do with my life, oh God, let it be a worship unto you. May I not complain. There's too many times I've complained about so many things. I want to live my life in true worship unto you, Lamb of God. Worship you, Lamb of God. Let my pain be worship. Let my victory be worship. Let my success be worship. Let even my things that I, I, I assume, I, I think is failure, let it be worship. Because at the end of the day, it is you who define what is success from what is failure. So all of me this day, Father, I yield to you. I surrender. I surrender everything that matters to me. Outside of you, the most important thing to me are my children. The ministry of committed into me. Those things, I lay them down on the altar. Nothing else. You, you will always be the first and the last. You are the alpha and the omega. Yes. That nothing will struggle with your place in my life or any other life of this people. May we be a generation of them who have come to the place of worship. At the beginning of this broadcast, I said, worship is what is going to finally bring Christ back to earth. There's, there must be a generation of them, hallelujah, who have caught the revelation that as they worship, the Bible says, yes, he comes down. He comes down. What a revelation this morning. Let us be that generation that as we worship, that as we honor, that as we continue to live our life, that our life will, will literally start pulling him, bringing him back down. Hallelujah. It's not going to be fear. It's not going to be the Antichrist. No, it's going to be a church, triumphant church, a church who are true worshipers. Let us be part of that triumphant church. A church that is not defeated. That we will not be defeated by time. That we will not be defeated by need. That we will not be defeated, oh God, by want. We will not be defeated by our own agenda and our own philosophy or even that which the world is promoting. We see Christ, him highly exalted. Come on. Jesus we see. That's what worship does. It gives you a better clarity of who Christ is, where he is. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. The more you worship him, the more you see things clearer. The more you see yourself clearer. The more you see the world better. Come on. Let's take a journey this morning. To the place of worship. I said earlier, worshippers are travelers. They are migrants. They are pilgrims. 
There's no worship without sacrifice. There's no worship without a journey. Move out of where you are and go worship him yonder. In Gethsemane, Jesus had to go further. He had to leave them. He go further. He went further. Isaac and his father went yonder to worship. Jeroboam said, no, you don't need to go further. <laughs> you know, just stay here. And he built an idol. He built a calf, one in Dan, one in, in Bethel. He said, this is your God. Worship God here. Yeah. What a perversion. What a perversion. Friends, God is calling us to go yonder and worship. It means you have to leave things behind. You have to leave things behind. Sometimes you have to leave people behind to worship God in spirit and in truth. There are too many distractions in our time, in our day. The, the, the plan of the enemy is to position within our life and space distractions so we don't see him. Hallelujah. I'm just running up. Then the Lord just brought you know, the concept that we're looking at yesterday again about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus left the crowd behind. He left the crowd behind. He found himself, yes, in an elevated realm where he can see. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. God. May we leave certain things behind. Certain things we even think is ministry. Things we think are important. Leave them behind. That was a very wealthy man. Some of us have not even done half of what Zacchaeus you know, I've done, I've, I've achieved. He was a wealthy man. He left his guardedness. He left his position and influence and affluence. He climbed a tree like a monkey. I'm sure some people, when they saw that man climbing the tree, they were laughing. What's wrong with this man? Has he lost his mind? What's going on with Zacchaeus? He packed his limousine or whatever it may be. He came with on that day. He wanted to see Jesus. That's the heart of worship. That is what God is calling the men of our generation to. God, return me back to the place of worship. Bring me back to the place where my heart, oh God, is totally committed to your will and ways. Remove me from all this distraction. Help me to worship you. Help me to know how to climb. Who can ascend? That guy understood that to worship God, you have to ascend. Your life must become an offering, an incense rising, ascending to God. But you can't ascend if you have not been laid on the altar. You must be burnt. All the fat must be burnt. Friends, the mandate of the hour is that we are called back to the place of pure worship, true worship. The Bible says the Father seeks for such. He's searching for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. No wonder that said, I found a man after my heart. When he found David, David was still a lad. David was still young. But when they looked at his heart, he was mature. Physically, David was still a young person, but in his heart, the Bible called him a man. It's in the place of worship we know he's mature. I told us earlier, when we worship, when we truly begin to worship, pride becomes a thing of the past. You can't worship God, amen, with loftiness of heart. You can't worship God with high look. Those things cannot come. They told us who can come to the heel of the Lord. Ah, God help me this morning. Help me, help my generation. Help us to lay a new pattern, a new standard. Help us to raise a standard of worship. I bless you, Father. I honor you. Holy Spirit, continue to remind us of the things that matters to the Father. So we can live our life, yes, in the narrowness of his demand for our day. Help us to continue to walk on that straight and narrow path. We refuse the broad road. We refuse. We deliberately refuse the broad road. No, we, we don't want the broad road. 
We want the straight and the narrow path so our life can bring glory and praise unto you. Continue to circumcise our heart. Circumcise our heart. We need a circumcision of heart because we can't really worship if our hearts are not circumcised. We want to climb. We want to enter the realm, the ascended realm. We want to live the realm, O God, of the valley. We don't want to die in needs. We want to come to the place of worship. Thank you, Father. Let the scale fall. Give us elevated sight. Touch our minds. Newness of mind. The mind of Christ is what we receive. To the glory of your name. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy, Lamb of God. Praise you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Elion. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Our Lord is worthy. Our Lord is exalted. Our Lord has risen with a shout. We bless you. We praise you. We extol you. We magnify you. You, O oh Lord, are worthy of glory and praise. Thank you, Father, for our worship this morning, sanctifying the realm of the nation of South Africa. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. We release the spirit of worship all across this nation, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Thank you, O oh God, at our worship this morning. Yes, sanctify the realm from the east to the west, from the south, yes, to the north. To the central, every aspect of our, of this land, of our continent. Yes, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Thank you, O God, for worship rising. The people, O God, who will worship you in spirit and in truth. Give us a new sense of vision, O God. Recalibrate our sight understanding. Bring us to a deeper revelation of what you are demanding and requiring of us. Let our life be a true reflection of your standard for this brand new day. We thank you. We honor you. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. Make us men and women who will watch day and night in the place of worship. Thank you, Father, for grace 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 apostolic men and women who are rising in the authority rising oh god yes to see that your will is established over their nation we thank you oh glory be to god glory be to god glory be to you lamb of god glory be to you lamb of god indeed we have become a city set on the hill that is not hidden yes our light is shining and we are transforming the realm the sphere because of a people yes who have taken their rightful place in the place of worship we thank you we honor you this morning glory to you lamb of god glory to you elion hallelujah glory thank you father thank you lord for the for the company of men and women rising in the presence procession of worship in the procession friends that was the secret of david that was how david was able to defeat his enemy because he was a man hallelujah who knew the heart of god in the place of worship when you become a worshiper of god you become invincible to the power so the attacks of the enemy climb to the heel of the lord friends it's a new perspective it's a new perspective who can come to the heel of the Lord? There's a new perspective. <clears throat> There's a new demand. There's a new requirement. When you can worship God, your life can become an instrument of transformation. We bless you, Lamb of God. Oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. I pray this morning. <clears throat> That the power of God, the presence of God will come into, yes, wherever you are, wherever you are listening, yes, watching this morning. I pray the presence of God will meet you there. That right now, everything that held you back from worshiping God will start fall falling and collapsing. That your life becomes indeed, yes, <clears throat> an expression of true, pure worship, unhindered, 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 unhindered unhindered you will live a life that glorify him everything about your life will bring praise and honor 
to the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for everyone out there, all our friends, loved ones. Thank you for change. Thank you for reform. Thank you for transformation. Thank you, Father, for the glory, <clears throat> the glory of your name. Yes, bringing them to a new position of truth as you call us to become priests, to stand in you with you in worship. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 This is how the Spirit of the Lord this morning, friends, has led us to, you know, worship and to, you know, to pray. I just, be, you know, bless the Lord for how God, amen, has, has really spoken and led us this morning. I pray that your heart and mine will be awakened again to, you know, the call to worship God in spirit and in truth. I pray that the presence of God will fill your household will fill your life, will fill your workplace, will fill your car, wherever you are, whatever amen, you're doing, that your life will be filled with joy because that's something that worship does. It brings joy back into your life. It brings peace. It brings tranquility into your life. Amen. Because watch, worship changes our perspective. Amen. So thank you everyone this morning for joining, for being part of this uh, our broadcast. May heaven continue to guide you and lead you. Have yourself a beautiful and a fruitful day. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.